Preface How to use this book When I started to write this book, my intention was to write a textbook based on my three decades of working in music ministry. The book is designed to offer advice and guidance for people who intend to form a new Christian ministry band, playing any style of contemporary Christian music, and for people who are already active in music ministry. It is not a practical how-to book, but rather a book that will challenge your motives and give advice for spiritual success through your music. The book can be used in one of two ways. You can treat the book simply as a textbook, read the book and meditate on the contents, asking God to guide you as you work through the chapters. However, the book comes with an accompanying workbook for you, or you and your band members, to work through. By completing the workbook, you will put on paper the answers to challenging questions from servanthood, submission to God, integrity, responsibility, and success. You will also make pledges before God to run your Christian band as a true ministry and, in doing so, form a foundation from which your band will operate. You will have a missionary statement that you can refer back to or modify as your band moves forward in service to God. This is an opportunity for people forming a new band to think through their calling and put on paper the aims and pledges that will take the new band forwards. For bands that are already in ministry, the workbook will enable you to take another look at your band and to assess how you can improve in what you do. However you decide to use this book, I hope that it helps you in your calling to music ministry. The workbook can be downloaded as many times as you wish from the Meltdown website, printed out and used as you work your way through the book. It may be a good idea to go through the workbook once each year and in doing so reassess how well you are doing in your service to God. The workbook can be downloaded from the InTune page on the Meltdown Music website, www.meltdownmusic.co.uk. God bless. Dave Williams Chapter 1. Why Music? To say music plays an important part in our lives is a great understatement. It plays a part in almost everything that we do in our Christian activity and in our daily routine. Well-written music can be the most memorable part of a movie. The movie Jaws demonstrated how just two musical notes can send our hearts beating with the anticipation of becoming a lunch, and how many people would not recognize that Agent 007 is about to save the world again when they hear the familiar signature tune that opens every James Bond movie. Music is now an important part of almost every new high-tech gadget. We walk around with our MP3 players, and the ability to make a telephone call seems secondary to the ability to play music with every new mobile phone that goes on sale. The truth is that we simply love our music. Music speaks to every part of our being. Music can make us happy or sad, remind us to be respectful or encourage us to celebrate. Almost every emotion can be linked to the sound made by a particular musical instrument. This is not something that is new to the 21st century. Music has always been integral to our lives, and a glance through the pages of Scripture will show us how music has always been used to help us in our celebrations and ceremonies. Let's take a quick look at some of the reasons music was used in Scripture. The most obvious use of music in Scripture is for times of praise and worship. Both the Old and New Testaments mention the use of music in worship, but music was used for many other reasons. Here are just a few passages of Scripture showing some of those reasons. 1. Chronicles 13.8 David and all the Israelites were celebrating with all their might before God, with songs and with harps, lyres, tambourines, cymbals and trumpets. 2. Chronicles 13.12-13 All the Levites who were musicians, Asper, Heman, Jedathan and their sons and relatives stood on the east side of the altar, dressed in fine linen, and playing cymbals, harps, and lyres. They were accompanied by 120 priests, sounding trumpets. The trumpeters and singers joined in unison, as with one voice, to give praise and thanks to the Lord. Accompanied by trumpets, cymbals, and other instruments, they raised their voices in praise to the Lord and sang. Revelation 5, 8-9 And when he had taken it, 
the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb. Each one had a harp, and they were holding golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, because you were slain, and with your blood you purchased men for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. Music was also used to lead people into battle and to celebrate victory. 1 Samuel 18, 6-7 When the men were returning home after David had killed the Philistine, the women came out from all the towns of Israel to meet King Saul, with singing and dancing, with joyful songs and with tambourines and lutes. As they danced, they sang, Saul has slain his thousands, and David his tens of thousands. Music was used to announce the arrival of a new king. 1 Kings 1, 34-35 There have Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet anoint him king over Israel. Blow the trumpet and shout, Long live King Solomon! Then you are to go up with him, and he is to come and sit on my throne and reign in my place. I have appointed him ruler over Israel and Judah. Music was used at funerals to announce feasts and holidays, to gather people in assembly, and just for the pleasure of listening to music. It is said that King Solomon wrote around 1,000 songs and his court boasted many musicians. And who can forget Psalm 150, which clearly demonstrates that instruments of all kinds can be used in praise of God. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise Him for His acts of power. Praise Him for His surpassing greatness. Praise Him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise Him with the harp and lyre. Praise Him with tambourine and dancing. Praise Him with the strings and flute. Praise Him with the clash of cymbals. Praise Him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. I would encourage you to spend time taking a look at the use of music in the Bible and to see how important a part music played in the lives of people of both the Old and New Testaments. The purpose of this book is to take a look at your desire to use music to minister the gospel of Jesus Christ. It will guide you to ensure that your calling is genuine and that you understand the formula to succeed in ministry. As you study scripture, you will see that music has many uses and can be used very effectively for Christian outreach. All music carries a message, and it is the source and anointing or empowering behind this message that gives the lyrics and the music the ability to uplift, encourage, challenge, and affect the listener. It is true that negative or unsuitable messages in music can have a negative effect on the listener, and I would encourage everyone to be aware of the source of the music they are listening to and to choose their music with this in mind. The fact that a great deal of mainstream music carries messages that are not compliant with the Christian faith or that some artists use imagery that would be questionable to most Christians does not invalidate the use of music to carry the message of Jesus to those who need to hear it. It was the Apostle Paul who said in 1 Corinthians 9.22, To the weak, I became weak to win the weak. I have become all things to all men, so that by all possible means I might save some. I do all this for the sake of the gospel, that I may share in its blessings. The simple fact of the matter is that many Christian churches would not even think about sending its people into the rock venues, music festivals, pubs and clubs in order to share the gospel with those people from the rock music culture regardless of the fact that Jesus told us to go into all the world and take the gospel message to those who need to hear it and thank God for those churches who do. For far too long, many churches have adopted the come in and find us approach, fully expecting the unsaved to walk through the doors of their church in order to find Christ. It is true that many people do just that. The church building is a safe place to invite friends to fellowship with Christians and, in doing so, they are introduced to the Christian faith. But what about those people who would never walk through the doors of a church? Surely we must go out to meet with them in their safe place, 
taking Jesus with us to speak to them in a language that they understand. The language of music is just one way that we can interact with those people who need to hear the Christian message. Music is a bridge builder and a great way to share something we have in common with those who need to find Christ. For the past 30 years, I have used Christian heavy rock music to reach people for Christ, and I can tell you from experience that where the name of Jesus is glorified and the gospel message is proclaimed, people will come under the conviction of the Holy Spirit, and some will be saved. Jesus can be and is glorified by sincere ministry-minded Christian bands, regardless of the style of music they play, the clothing they wear, or the color of the speaker stacks. One fundamental truth that bands need to understand is that people can only receive Christ when convicted of sin by the Holy Spirit. It must be understood that, yes, Paul became all things to all men, but he did not take on board their principles, ethics, conscience, and their sense of right and wrong, their scruples. 1 Corinthians 10 29, 31-33, says this, For why should another man's scruples apply to me and my liberty of action be determined by his conscience? So then, whatever you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do all for the honour and glory of God. Do not let yourselves be hindrances by giving an offence to the Jews or to the Greeks or to the ecclesia of God. Just as I myself strive to please, to accommodate myself to the opinions, desires, and interests of others, adapting myself to all men in everything I do, not aiming at or considering my own profit and advantage, but that of the many, in order that they may be saved. We must understand that we cannot convince people of their need for Jesus. It is by the work of the Holy Spirit and by hearing the word of God that people see their need for salvation through Jesus' death on the cross and subsequent resurrection. John 16, 5-10 Now I am going to him who sent me, yet none of you asks me where are you going. Because I have said these things, you are filled with grief. But I tell you the truth, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the counsellor will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will convict the world of guilt in regard to sin and righteousness and judgment. In regard to sin, because men do not believe in me. In regard to righteousness, because I am going to the Father, where you can see me no longer. And in regard to judgment, because the prince of this world now stands condemned. Christian music of all styles and working within all genres and cultures can carry the message of salvation to those who need to hear it. Ask yourself these questions. What will your church do to reach the local youth who visit rock clubs? Do you have the means to reach them and have you offered them anything that would make it worthwhile spending time to hear what you say? The honest answer to these questions for most churches is that there is nothing they are doing to reach these people and they have nothing in common with them. So many churches expect people to seek the faith. They expect locals to walk through the doors of the church in search of God. In reality, this is not the usual way we reach people for Jesus. It is a proven fact that one-to-one evangelism and personal outreach to individuals are very effective ways to reach people for Christ. Making that first contact is essential in effective evangelism. This is the main objective for the Christian rock band. Making first contact earning the right through making good music to be listened to, showing people that Christians are not weak people, but rather have a message that needs to be heard, and that they are so fired up about their relationship with Jesus that they want to share the message with everyone in their peer group. For the past 30 years, the Meltdown Ministry has taken the power of music and used it to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with people from the hard, heavy, and alternative music cultures. We have in that time seen many saved, healed, and delivered by the power of Christ. The first contact these people had with Meltdown was through the music of a Christian rock band. The question I want to address in this book is what makes a good Christian rock band? What responsibilities do our bands have to the church and their fellow Christian musicians? And how can your band be used effectively for Jesus? Music speaks to everyone 
and to some people music is central to their culture and lifestyle. So regardless of what style of music you play, aim to do it under God's anointing and with his blessing. Let's go out into all the world, reaching people with music that they can relate to.